working on the evangelism and church planting, and this is the first class. It's about the gospel. Gospel is the core thing for evangelism. If we don't have gospel, that's the. If we don't have gospel, what we're gonna, what we're gonna spread out. If the evangelism is not just just building churches and making churches and you know denominations and other mission organizations, um, it's about the uh, spreading gospel. Okay. So that's the. Um, In the evangelism, that's why we have to think about the gospel. But, but we can have, last time we, I, we did just spoke about the uh, denominations. So, um, so each denomination has their own theology. based on what they believe. Okay. Depends on what they believe, their theologies can be different. So, as I said, there is a PCUSA, Presbyterian, Methodist, USN, uh, Methodist Church, USMC, or other denominations and Lutherans. And there, there are ELCA and um, LCMS, Lutheran Church Major Synod. And there's one more, I think, but I don't know. Um, there was only one SMS in um, 18th century uh, in the United States. They came to the States from Europe. And they started the Lutheran Church in, um, and 100 years later, in 19th, 19th century, um, you know, the, the Lutherans came from uh, Jackson area uh, in Germany to uh, Missouri. So that's why they just put the Missouri Synod, uh, Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod. <laughs> And ELCA is Evangelical Lutheran Church America. Uh, so LCMS is kind of um, kind of classic. I mean, quite conservative, and ESCA is quite liberal. But they are thinking. ESA is liberal, and ESA is thinking look, SMS is too conservative, okay, too old, too classic, okay. <clears throat> so they uh, um, they they got separated, all right. And Presbyterians, there are some other Presbyterians in the United States, actually many Presbyterian uh, denominations. Um, and a Baptist, and uh, there are so many other evangelical churches, evangelical churches, or reformed churches. Reformed means from Catholic, so they wanted to reform because that form they don't like that form, so they wanted to reform. So uh, Martin Luther uh, start, started Reformation, okay? Reform means change the form, right? Um, so uh, since then, there has been, have been many um, denominations, uh, movement, uh, and then they just made their own denominations. Um, <clears throat> Mennonites, or some other, you know, denominations. Well, they have all different 
beliefs and because they have different beliefs uh, they made their own theologies based on what they believe and uh, their gospels can be different okay their view of world church and the world um, those are all different okay so but all all, do, all of those denominations are evangelizing which means spreading gospel okay so i don't want to just stick to one denomination <clears throat> to explain the um, gospels but uh, on the basis on the basis of the bible i want to just talk about the very simple gospel in this class because without gospel we, we can you know talk about the evangelism at all because uh, for reformed churches spreading gospels is quite important for um, for the mission they got from the they got from God, okay? Because as long as you know people are believing the Bible is God's word, they got they got gospels, right? And then uh, their mission is to is spreading gospels to the world. So when but but I know but there are some. Um, pastors and churches they only want to know uh, you know expanding their churches uh, but definitely they are saying they are spreading gospels but um, if they are focusing on expanding their churches and church members for the you know large for the larger budgets and power or something like that um, I think and then they don't take care of their church members well or whatever or they just do something wrong uh, like buying jet planes for their pastors or huge expensive properties for their pastors and, and pastors and the board members and high, you know, status, uh, you know, big guys in their churches are using their money, you know, collected from church members to something for themselves. And there are so many nasty churches in this world. Um, so a guy just said, just run, run away from churches because churches are going bad and they are going crazy, you know. Um, unless, unless people or Christians are not going to, you know, stay in the healthy gospel, something. <coughs> So, uh, the God, but the prime, prime goal for Christians and uh, Christian churches, they, their mission is to spread the gospel and educate people, um, um, teach people the Bible, right, and so that they can be uh, equipped as a good, you know, equipped, um, and get ready for the mission spreading gospel so that is very important and we have to know what the gospel is okay so that's the key point in this class um, as, as you notice that the reason I just put the gospel that the, this this you know class for the gospel uh, is um, now, 
people are not interested in reading the gospel or spreading gospel much, uh, but they pretend, actually they do, you know, spread the gospels, but their prime goal or other second, uh, second goal must be, you know, something else, and then they can be uh, decay the real meaning, the value of uh, the gospel. So that is kind of sad in this, you know, in this age. Actually, it's been, you know, church, church has been doing that kind of messy things for many, many years and centuries. Um, so we have to remember, you know, as we studied, if you are Christians, all Christians are supposed to spread the gospel, and that is very important. Uh, that that's why, you know, uh, church members, uh, Christians are there, and churches are there, right? So if you want to just see uh, whether this church, whether a church is healthy or not. You can, the first uh, litmus paper for, you know, um, just to see uh, whether that church is right or wrong, you have to see, you know, that church, if that church is working for the spreading gospels and teaching the gospels to people, including all the kids, right? Um, Unless you have to run away from those churches, because unless you're spreading gospels, there is no reason they have churches. There's no reason you know people want to be Christians. You know, being Christians is not only for saving their souls and having the eternal life, but they are supposed to spread the gospel because they got the eternal life and they, they got saved for free. And if they confess that they got those, that, you know, the ultimate gift from and, uh, and grace from God, um, the saving their souls and having eternal life, uh, they cannot stop there they are supposed to spread the Gospels. And that's the, that's the most important thing for Christians in churches. Okay. All right. So, so that's why we want to just, just, you know, think about the Gospel. Okay. Gospel, as I said, that is good news. So what the good news is, that is today's topic. Okay. Uh, there are over 32 sermons and disclosure, uh, discourses preached in the book of Acts. Acts comes f right after the uh, Gospels, Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So Acts is the fifth book in New Testament. And it shows that it is about how um, the physical churches got started. So the churches got started, you know, after the Pentecost. I mean, Pentecost, um, which means 50 days, you know, after the re Jesus resurrection, and he ascended, he did ascended to heaven. And um, when disciples and other believers got together in, uh, in an attic for prayer, there were about 120 people. And they just prayed fervently and then they started to speak in tongues. And speaking tongues, um, Speaking tongues means speaking dialectics, um, 
they don't they haven't learned other languages uh, they are speaking other languages for example I never had I I I don't know how to speak, um, you know. For example, I don't, I don't know how to speak um, um, any African language. Okay, I never been there. I never had had any uh, friends there from there. And I have no idea what's happening there, but suddenly I'm speaking that language. Okay. How can that be happened? Well, actually that happened in, um, for those people, 120 believers there. So you have to be careful when you Think about speaking tongues, because speaking tongues is not speaking any language you don't know. I mean, nobody can understand. Some people are thinking that uh, all Christians are supposed to get supposed to get the gift, one of the gift, one of the, one of the gifts from God. Okay, from God, and if you are Christians, you are supposed to speak speak tongues. Okay, and there are so many gifts, you know, like teaching, studying, uh, playing sports. You know, you know, there are so many talented people and they got those things as gift. Well, they train themselves, but they, we, we know, we know there are gifts. So when our two little, two kids were in elementary school, they, you know, they, uh, they did, you know, they, they studied well, so the school just accepted you know, chose certain kids as gifted students. Gifted students. All right. So the teacher, the teachers uh, give give those gifted students more homeworks and more assignments and more challenges. But those are just, it depends on you know school districts and teachers. If the teachers have any certain training in mind, and, and they can challenge those people depends on their abilities. But some teachers don't know how, what to do, even though they got trained as give, you know teachers for uh, gifted students and. So it depends on. You know. <clears throat> um, anyway, um, so they are, they know they are gifted students. Um, there was somebody uh, I know. There, you know, what's an African American? Um, I forgot her name and she used to learn playing piano when she was young and one day she just noticed that um, there was uh, another co you know friend you know who was taking piano lessons from the same um, teacher and she realized that she's playing really well that was, they started, you know, almost at the same time, but she was playing something here, but her friends are playing way up there. And she noticed that she cannot catch up with her at all because she, not, she, she knew that her friends had, she's gifted students. 
So that is given by, you know, God. That's what Christians are believing. And, okay? So, um, Christians got gifts. And some people are thinking, if you are Christians, all Christians are supposed to speak tongues. That is wrong. Some people are thinking if you got if you can speak tongues by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, that's what X says. When they got when they were praying, Holy Spirit came down and you know, 120 people were speaking tongues. Okay? That means speaking foreign languages, okay? Foreign languages. How they didn't know? They knew that. I mean, they didn't know it, actually. <laughs> but on that day, that was one of the three uh, big, um, big, celebration for Jewish people so they came to the Jerusalem okay Jerusalem from all over the places because diasporas the scattered Jewish people and they just leave other countries and other places and but they are supposed to come to uh, Jerusalem like three times a year and worship the Lord all together. So they, they came from all of the places and suddenly uh, they just heard what those people are speaking. And they got surprised how they, how they are speaking those languages, what we, we learned, we heard from all over the places, all over the places, all other countries. How can that be happen? And, and that it, only those people knew that it's happening by the Holy Spirit. And some of them were thinking, they all wondered, you know, but but because they knew those people were, were not from those places at all. They never visited other places before, I mean. But they knew that those people are saying, and then some people are thinking they got drunken. But it was daytime. So Peter, one of, one of Jesus' disciples, and he, Peter just stood up and you know, told the people that it's daytime. We don't we we, we we are not drunk at all, but we got the Holy Spirit and we are speaking tongues and that is happening. And then he just explained, he just explained and that we are we are calling that is preaching or sermon. And Peter is saying he just explained, you know, why, why Jesus came down to the earth and what he did and how he died and how he resurrected and, and how he uh, ascended to heaven back. So when we believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as our Savior, we're going to be saved. Actually, that's what those people spoke, and that's what Peter explained. So that is what? That is the Gospel. If we have, if we miss that thing, we don't know what the Gospel is, and we don't know what we are believing, and we don't know, you know, we have to spread the gospel. This isn't that important. Okay, that happened in uh, Acts chapter uh, 2. 
Okay. Um, so Acts is a historical book in the Bible that describes what the early New Testament disciples actually believed and taught. The word preach, defined by the dictionary, means to expound upon, especially to urge acceptance or a compliance with. Okay. So, uh, when they spread the Gospels and when we are spreading Gospels, we want people, you know, listen to the story, listen to the Gospel and, you know, believe, believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as their saviors and be saved. And that's what we are, um, we are expecting. That's what we are supposed to do. All right. All right. Um, um, there are so many sermons. So, as I said, Apostle Peter, he just preached in Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 41, and chapter 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 15, and other apostles, Acts chapter 5. Stephen, Stephen, he was not one of the twelve disciples that Jesus chose, but he just selected as a deacon to take care of the church, serve the church, right? Because the disciples were busy to preach people. So they were too busy to take care of the church stuff, like uh, distributing uh, food to people or taking care of this and that, because because they started their church. I mean, they started the church. Well, that's the church, right? Philip and Ananias and Saul, he just converted and various believers, Barnabas and Saul. And those people preached, and which means they spread the Gospels. As you can see, the spreading Gospel is not limited to 12 disciples. They didn't think about only 12 disciples can spread the gospel because they saw and they learned, they saw Jesus, they stayed with Jesus, and they learned from Jesus, and they were witnesses. Well, actually, we just separate those people as apostles or 12 disciples. But, or other people preach the truth. They delivered the gospel to uh, all people they know, they can contact. So as you can see, at the in the beginning, in the beginning of the church, they all, all people spread the gospel. All people, you know, delivered the gospel to people. So Actually, nowadays, you know, all Christians, actually, all Christians are supposed to spread the gospel too. So you cannot say, because I'm not a pastor, so I'm not a priest, so I cannot tell you the gospel to you. That, that is totally wrong. Well, the gathering of Christians, they form a church, they can call pastor, pastors for leading service and something like that because they, we, we make I mean we, we just made, made the regulations and rules and systems for the churches so that's what it is and but that's, that does not mean that all other lay people can't preach can't spread the gospel well, that was the weakness, and that is still weakness for, for the modern um, evangelical churches and Catholic churches. Because, well, we, for the 
the right order, we have to choose and train and uh, call pastors for their worships and something like that, but they, lay people don't lead worships today because that's what it is. I mean, that's, that, that's, what the, that's based on what the laws and systems we made, but we all are open to preach the gospel to all other people. Doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you can just stood up during the services and just preach instead of you know pastor. If, they, if you have then you have the, the pastor there. No, but um, basically we can spread the gospel at any time, at any place, you know, to everybody. Okay? So, as you can see, so many other lay people, deacons and other people, delivered gospel to other people. Why we can do that? Yes, we can do it today, okay? But we need, even though we have to follow, you know, some church rules, all right? So it shows that, it shows that how the gospel started and who can deliver the gospels to other people. Everybody, whoever believes Jesus, you know, as they and accept Jesus as they say. Through studying the only disciples' message, we discover these revealing facts. First and most important is that Jesus Christ was crucified for our sins, and that He rose the third day from the dead. Jesus said that this event revealed God's great love for you and for me. This great act is referred to as reconciliation. Reconciliation means to establish a friendship between God and man. Secondly, it means a settle or resolve the barrier that was caused by sin. Reconciliation referred to in scripture is the provision of God's grace. Well, we want to just talk about the gospel, and there are so many, uh, I mean, there are some core, core and important things we need to understand. Because um, when you want to know something new, you need to understand the terms, and terms, and these are very important. First of all, okay, who is Jesus? The second is who we are, sinners. And God's grace. Right. I want to just read the next one and then uh, think about the, you know, explain all those things simply. The grace is God doing for us in our weakness what we could not do for ourselves. Okay. If we can't do anything for us, why we, why, why we need God? Why we need any other help? Right. We cannot do some. The, the, the particular things by ourselves, so we need somebody's help and we need God's help. We must realize that sin is the problem that has kept us from a relationship with God. From the Old Testament, we see that sin is so serious that it demanded punishment by death. Skill 1820 states the soul that sins it shall die. 
The shedding of blood in the Old Testament sacrifices to mitigate this penalty with its worshippers. Because of God's great love, Jesus Christ was sent to die on the cross. All right? This event can only be interpreted as we realize that sin results in death. I want to just write before we, I forget, um, sin leads us to death. Okay. <sighs> there I was. Okay. The, God, the good news is that the that Christ has taken it upon himself to bear the penalty of our sins and now offers us forgiveness. So forgiveness. Alright? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. It's a relationship word, the goal. Forgiveness is a relationship word. Uh, the goal of forgiveness is a relationship with God. Forgiveness means that God is willing, because of Jesus Christ's death upon the cross, to pardon us, that is, to pass over our offenses without punishment and to let them go as if they had never been committed. There is no condemnation because of Jesus Christ, that is, as believers, we never will really have to face judgment for our sins. The scripture says it's by God's grace we are saved. All right? So then, what the gospel is? So for explaining, the, for understanding the gospel, we need to understand these. Okay? So, gospel is the core thing in evangelism, and these are the core things we need to know to understand gospel, what the gospel is, okay? So, Jesus, I mean, for, for that, to understand those things, um, we want to just start with something something related to this, okay. God, God created God is creator, okay. We call him creator because he created all things, all things, and he created people Men and women, okay? And he was very close with those people. We know the first man, Adam and Eve, okay? And God just, you know, gave everything to them, which means you, you own it. No, they, they didn't own it because Creator, he owns everything, right? He owns everything. But God ordered those people to take care, take care of other things. As long well as they can. They cannot take care of the sun and moon or stars or something like that, but they can take care animals, plants, fish, or something like that, right? Okay? We are failing those things, so we are getting suffering. So, recently, Japan, Japan, uh, Fukushima, um, you know, one, one nuclear plant, um, Nuclear plant got ex got kind of exploded, kind of had a problem, and and they just saved all the you know polluted by nuke nuke and in 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 a in a tank in tanks in a kind of that is I don't know what what that in English but that is pretty dangerous uh, dangerous things. 
So they just save those things, but already many, many nuclear waste got, you know, spread all over the places, including, you know, so we are actually getting, you know, bad effect from that thing in uh, LA too, because those are, you know, moving around all over the places. But anyway, they just save those things and they decide, Japan decided to release those nuclear waste little by little two, from two years later. So in 2023, from 2023, they're gonna release those things to ocean Little by little, they they are saying they're gonna you know just just purif clean that those things, but nobody can believe it because we all know that we all scientists know that no one can no one can clean those nuclear waste at all. So they are telling a lie. I think they know it because all people know how we cannot imagine that only Japanese don't know. You know, lots of Japanese people are against in the government's, uh, government's decision like this because <clears throat> it's going to pollute, pollute the ocean, fish, and we're going to eat fish, and Japanese like sushi and sashimi. And I like, you know, um, the seafood, lots of people like the seafood. Why if they just release those things and fish, fish eat those things? Because they have to drink the ocean water for breathing, for surviving, right? And then we, we eat this, okay, we eat this, and we're gonna get sick. And we're gonna get cancers, lots of cancers because of the nuclear waste. And it's not gonna, when, once we eat, it's not gonna be, you know, just, just go out without through our waste, it's gonna stay in our body. Okay, it's gonna stay in our body. It's it's gonna stay in the fish. It's gonna stay in our body. And what will happen? I'm thinking that I'm not gonna eat seafood. Maybe at least two years later. Cause once they you know, release those nuclear waste to ocean, it's gonna, the, the, water, the water, you know, travels all over the places. And I think I'm not gonna swim in the sea in a couple of years. I'm never gonna do that. It's going to bad for my body and it's going to kill me. Basically, I mean, that's a crazy decision. And I, you know, the Japanese, Japanese government decided this easiest and cheapest, cheapest way to release those nuclear waste. They got failed to take care of this work. And actually they, that is killing, that is killing people. Anyway, so God created the people and people are supposed to take care of all other things as much as they can. and. The main, the main reason God created is he's lazy, but so he just created it and he doesn't want to care and you care. <laughs> no. 
he, the main reason why he, he created the people because that because that makes God happy. And he but he gave those people one you know one uh, thing they have to keep and don't need the tree of knowledge, okay? Tree of knowledge, but but she got she got the 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 fruit and she gave Adam the fruit and Adam knew it that is a forbidden fruit and he ate it. And that means that means they make a sin against God. Because they made a sin against God, they were um, they became sinners. Okay? They became sinners. And all sinners are supposed to die. They have to pay. Okay? You steal some, someone else's property and you have to pay. You can't pay, you go to jail. Even though you pay that bad, you have to go to jail because stealing itself is sin. Okay? And in front of God, the ultimate you know, good, I mean, the ultimate good God, I mean, so they made a sin against God and they became sinners and they, they are yeah, destined to die. They were not supposed to die at first, but God just, you know, uh, just judged them, okay, you made a sin against me. And you are sinners, and sinners are supposed to die. And the relationship got broken. So, God and people were very close. They used to meet, you know, very often. They did talk with each other, all right? But one day, because of the sin, they were disconnected because they are sinners. God is good. Alright? So they cannot go to God because of the sin. Alright? And they are destined to die. Death. That's the condition of sinners. So we, under we understand this now. All right. <clears throat> then, because they all all those people and their descendants are sinners and they make they make sins still, God just you know they, they because they can't go there to God. Only way is that God comes to those people and but He has to. Uh, find the solution. People can't find any solution to be reconciled with reconciled, reconciled. It comes here. Reconciliation. Alright? Because those are sinners, they can't find any, any way, any way to um, Reconcile with God, okay? So the only way people can be saved is God can go there, alright? So, what? God sent Jesus, Jesus, so that they can come to God, alright? For that, for that. For that, what God needed, and what people needed, all right? Okay, because those are sinners, please remember that, because they made a sin, 
and they became sinners, and they are uh, supposed to die. So God had to, had to, you know, somebody to connect to this, but one of them can do that? No, those are all are supposed to die. I'm not supposed to, I can't say I'm going to die for that person, you save that person. No, you're going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. Oh, oh we are going to die. But how can I just, you know, sacrifice? If I don't have anything, how can I give something to God for this person? <laughs> right? You see? So God chose, I mean, God just decided to send his son, Jesus, to connect to that relationship. Because sin is a relational world. If I live alone in this world, who cares what I do? Only I can choose what I do. I'm the law. I'm the rule. I'm the ruler. I'm the leader. I'm the only person. I decide whatever I want. I do whatever I want. And that's it. Who cares? There is nobody who claims that I'm a sinner or I'm a good person. Okay? Sin means, sin means I make sin against, against somebody. Isn't it? If there are two people and one person can make, make a sin against the other person and that can be sin. And the other person can say this is the sin. <clears throat> okay, so Jesus sent G I mean God sent Jesus on the earth. Why? He could have just save those people. But that is God's rule. God's God doesn't want to just you know, all right, you just come. For, for saving people's lives, the sinners' lives, any good, no sinners, no sinner can die for those people. That is the pain. It's a pain. If I'm a perfect person, I can claim God, God, I'm gonna be, I, I can go to you, but she cannot go to you because of she, she's a sinner, I'm not a sinner, so I'm gonna stay here, but please accept this woman instead of me. Instead of me, God need the person who can die for those sinners so they can be saved. So God decided to send His Son as real human for replacing those pe those sinners' lives. Okay? And he made it, and he reconciled it. So, because the, Jesus died those, for those people, and Jesus could be a bridge between them, 
because he just take all the sins away, all right? So those people can go to God, come to God, I mean, right? Through, only through Jesus. It is opened to them, to those sinners, but what if they don't trust Jesus? But what if they don't accept Jesus as their Savior? What if they don't confess, you know, confess that Jesus died for their sins? We as sinners, we can go, can they come to God? No. If they don't trust this, and if they still think that is this, they cannot come. But it is connected with Jesus. So they can come, only they accept Jesus as their Savior. Only they trust and believe Jesus. He, you know, who reconciled, who reconciled God and sinners. That is forgiveness. That is forgiveness, and that is given by God's grace. No human, humans merit. Okay? It's not because of the human's merit. And you deserve to be saved. Because you are a hard worker, because you are smart, because you are rich. Because you are ethically right, because you are pretty, because you are handsome. <laughs> no. Because that was saving people, sinners. That was God's plan. Okay? He planned it and He practiced it. Through Jesus, people couldn't ask that because they are destined to die. So it happened from this side, not from this side. That means they didn't do anything, but that is given. The saving, the saving is given to people because it's a given. That is. God's grace. It's God's grace. What if you owe one million dollars from a person? You have to pay it back. Well, you're gonna just give up because it is big amount of money. You can't pay that back. What if you owe borrow? You know, one thousand dollars from a person, you have to pay back. Well, what if for somebody, your friend, pay one thousand dollars for you, and do you have to pay another one thousand dollars say no you are you are paid because your friend paid one thousand dollars for instead of you for you what if you owe one million dollars and but but your your father or your mother or your son or your daughter paid paid one million dollars for you do you still have to pay one million dollars to the person you borrowed the money from you, are you Joking? No, no. What if your father, I'm gonna pay one million dollars for you and you don't have to pay the money to the person and me and your debt is cleaned. That is what so called what? That that is what's so called grace. Thank you, Father, and that's it.
That's it. That is God's grace. And all those all those stories is what? Gospel. Good news. Because my debt is paid. My debt is paid. My debt is all of my debt is paid off. By Jesus Christ. And I don't have to pay, which means I don't have to die. Because I saved. My sin is away. My sin is cleansed away. I'm free. I'm not going to die because of Jesus, because of God's grace. That's God's grace. Did I do anything for that? No. I'm just breathing. I'm just you know, accept, accepting Jesus as my Savior. And that's it. So for accepting Jesus as your Savior, what you I have to pay? You don't pay anything but accept Jesus as your Savior. And that's it. It's a happening here. It's a happening here. You decide and you, you, just, you just accept Jesus as you say, and you confess that, and that's it. You don't pay a penny. You don't sweat any. You don't dig the dirt at all. You don't work for that at all, it's free. It's easy to be saved. That's why it is good news. If that is too hard, well, if you make one million dollars, you can be saved. It's hard. How many people can do that? Well, if you can be saved and have eternal life, by paying one million dollars, lots of people can do that. But majority of people can't do it. It's not happening that way. It's not happening that way. It's not happening that way. But it is free. It is free. Right? It's important. It is free. How nice is it? God's grace. God's grace. So these are very simple, okay? Very simple thing of the gospel. Alright? Alright. So I want to just read this thing again. Uh, this event can only be interpreted as we realize that sin results in death, that is, banishment from God's presence and eternal ruin. The good news is that Christ has taken upon himself to bear the penalty of our sins and now offers us forgiveness. Forgiveness is a relationship word. The goal of forgiveness is a relationship with God. Forgiveness means that God is willing because of Jesus Christ's death upon the cross to pardon us, that is, to pass off our offenses without punishment and to let them go as if they had never been committed. Now, there is no condemnation because of Jesus Christ, that is, as believers, we, we never will have to finish judgment to fall our sins. The scripture says it is by God's grace we are saved. Well, That kind of God's work, God's work for 
are seeming fearful. We, we, we can see um, this kind of thing in the Old Testament and that's why we uh, can see God just planned this, thing, this event for a long time and finally it happened 2,000 years ago uh, with Jesus Christ. There is a, there is, uh, there is God, um, Galilee River, Jordan River, and Jerusalem. That's Israel and Egypt. And Israelites got slave, enslaved in Egypt for many, many years. <coughs> And then um, God just decided to just save Israelites and back to the land, so called the promised land, Israel. For for the day, God said, God just saved. Israelites out of Egypt, that's what's so called Exodus. You know, God sent his messenger to people in Egypt. Okay, you kill a lamb, you kill a lamb, and Put those blood, put those blood on your door. And his his uh, his his angel. That was the tenth. That was the tenth curse on Egypt, because Carol didn't accept God's God's purpose, God's order. I mean. You just send Israelites back to the land I promised for them, but he wouldn't answer that because Pharaoh needed those people for making, you know, for building pyramids and for, because many things that they can use, you know, slaves for. I have a slaves, so I can use those slaves for my properties or something like that, right? No pain. Those are not employees, but those are slaves. Free manpower. People like it, right? That's why um, Americans and Europeans, especially the Englanders and other people, just hunted African Africans in Africa and they just shipped them uh, to America and um, your countries for slavery works. Free manpower. Well, they just bought those, you know, people from the merchants, but actually they, uh, they are providing free work. That is, that is a sad, that's, that is a sad history, right? How people can buy people for, you know, that breaking work. They raped, they killed, they hit. <laughs> that is crazy history. No. Anyway, um, Harold refused to refused God's proper God's order and and in the tenth you know punishment God just decided to kill the first bone first bone 
whether they uh, pe people, whether you know, whether they uh, animal or something like that. So uh, God ordered Moses, you know, order people. When you you just kill a man and put the blood in front on your door, the killing angel, God God's you know God's messenger, gonna kill all the firstborn in Egypt. But when the angels see the blood on the door, and he's he. The ants are gonna kill the first one in this house because there is no blood on the door. And when the angel see the the blood on the door, he's the, the ants are gonna pass over the house, right? Pass over the house to the next house, and he's the ants are gonna and they kills the first one in in this in this house. There is no blood on it on the door. So, so we know the Passover. Okay, Passover. So we just keep the Passover in the United States too. That's the biggest event. I mean, that's the big event for Jewish people, Israel, and we can understand that. You know, just put the blood on it, and as the John the Baptist said, when Jesus coming to him for baptism, and he just said, "Look, he is the Lamb of God, the blood of Lamb of God." So when you just put put the blood on the door which means when you accept Jesus and Jesus died for us he just bled for us blood means life so uh, we can be saved okay all right so that kind of a thing through that kind of you know things and records and uh, the Old Testament, we could we can understand that um, you know the Jesus. I mean, Jesus saved us, and once we believe and just practice this, because because you know I th I think a lot of Jewish Israel people died you know lost their firstborns, whether they uh, you know people or um, animal. If they didn't trust that order, if they didn't follow that direction, they lost, you know, their first of all. So the problem, the thing is that, do you believe it? So gospel is spreading good news to people so when you accept that you're going to be saved if you don't you're not going to be saved so is there a response that we must take to to this wonderful news yes and needing forgiveness in any meaningful sense of the word uh, presupposes our guilt but studying these early sermons and acts it is it is revealed that we must repent Repentance is a gift that God grants people who won't be saved. It is a new attitude, a change of heart that results in a one turning to God and away from sin. Repentance involves turning from sin to God. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna be sinners at all, you know, anymore, and I wanna just come to God. Repent. And what if we make the sins again? Because you are children of God already, and your other sins will be forgiven. I mean, once you become children of God, you're not going to die. You are saved. Right? You say what? 
if you say something, do you think your father is going to just kill you because you steal someone else's property? So we can understand that easily. Right? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. An example of how one must trust Christ is expressed by the story of a pilot. That's kind of weird, right? A pilot who crashed in the ocean as he saw a piece of raft floating by, he really believed that the raft could save him. He finally perished as he saw the raft float away. Even though he believed it could save him, it did not save him in order for that raft to save him. He must throw himself on it, cling to it, rely on it, and trust himself to it. Saving faith is throwing yourself on, clinging to, relying and trusting yourself to Jesus Christ and his saving work for you upon the cross. It is trusting Jesus alone for your salvation. This decision to trust Jesus Christ alone for your personal salvation was also publicly expressed by an act of believer's baptism. The baptism publicly identified a person as having accepted Jesus Christ and his redemptive work. It was expressed at the time of conversion or shortly thereafter. So we did a study on uh, the, the gospel today, and gospel is the core thing in evangelism. If we don't know the gospel, we can't evangelize, because that, that's the thing we have to spread. So in the gospel, we, we took a look at you know, who Jesus and what he did for us, and we were sinners and we got forgiven because of God's grace. And we all are supposed to spread the gospel to everybody we know and we don't know. So our reaching is heavy to item for all Christians. And that's the that's the thing we have to know and practice. That's for today. I'll see you next week. Stay safe.